Hey yo, it's another episode of Mavis and Me. Today, I'm going to be talking about being aware of and managing your service dog's safety. I'll cover working in traffic, maneuvering through crowds, dealing with creepy people, last ditch effort escalator safety, and managing other dogs. <music> handlers depend on our dogs to keep us safe. The least we can do is be proactive in keeping them safe too. I've seen several other YouTube videos recently where service dogs or their handlers are confronted or even assaulted by some wackadoo out in public. Every one I've seen so far has been at least partially preventable. My dog's safety is of utmost importance to me and I'm not afraid or embarrassed to do something out of the norm to keep it that way. If that means I use my hand to push someone away I use the end of my leash to pop a loose dog on the snout, or I simply just move to a safer spot. None of that is beneath me. I'm not there to fight for my equal rights with someone who is clearly not firing on all eight cylinders, nor am I going to get close enough to someone who has a dog that is out of control just so I can point out to them that their dog shouldn't have public access rights. I'm there because my list of errands requires me to be there. My only goal is to take care of what I need to get done and for Mavis and I to get home in one piece. Let's start with safety and traffic. First and foremost, follow normal pedestrian safety guidelines. If you find yourself walking amongst vehicular traffic often, I recommend you wear noticeable clothing. A bright hat or reflective jacket can go a long way to getting a driver's attention. Walk along the direction that drivers would expect a pedestrian to be. Use sidewalks when available. Don't be weaving back and forth through parked cars. Be aware of your surroundings and watch for cars moving in reverse or turning corners. Your dog should be close by your side so you can change directions quickly without tripping over her or losing control of her. If she's small, picking her up and carrying her until you're in a safe place to put her back down probably isn't a bad idea. Moving in crowds is very similar to moving amongst cars, except most of the rules are now out the window. People zigzag through crowded places, they run, jump down stairs, and stop suddenly all without a single thought about how this affects other pedestrians around them. They could be on bikes, skateboards, roller skates. They might be in high heels, boots, sandals, or even barefoot. They might be wearing parkas, skirts, trench coats, denim, or layers of thick coats. They might smell like food, aftershave, perfume, illness, or alcohol. Your dog is now in a position to get stepped on, bumped into, pushed around, pet, and smacked with purses, briefcases, and backpacks. Your dog is going to hear a random kissy noise, or the word puppy about every 30 seconds. Talk about a lot of stress, huh? In my experience, Mavis works hardest in situations where she's among the crowds. Those are the nights where she sleeps the most sound, snoring loudly. Hiking eight miles of rough trail doesn't wipe her out as much as spending an hour maneuvering through an overpopulated city street. Again, keeping your dog right next to your side will reduce her getting jostled by crowds. Walking with her on the outside of the mass, along a wall or grassy strip, can help to funnel the public away from her. Standing in lines brings up its own set of issues. Here you have people stepping on your dog, pushing carts into your dog, bumping them with baskets, and the most obnoxious one, people who now have you as a captive audience. These are the folks who believe it's now okay to turn around and talk to your dog because you guys are only standing there. He can't be working now, right? Ugh. To avoid interaction between these people and Mavis, I use the different blocking techniques, but in a backwards way. Instead of her protecting me from the stranger, I use these to protect her from the stranger. If the person is in front of me being a pain, I ask her to block behind me. If the person behind me keeps bumping into her or talking to her, I move her into a front block. By repositioning her, I can often avoid a conflict. Taking up space above your service dog when stopped helps people to keep from accidentally stepping on her. I often put Mavis into a down and then step over her back so that I'm straddling her. I'm watchful as people approach and I will lean towards them so they subconsciously give us a wider berth. If I'm on a standing room only bus or in a checkout line, I will park her along a wall if possible and then stand in front of her so that she's between my feet and the wall. This way, people moving about the area walk around me 
which avoids them getting near her at all. The last thing I want is for someone to step on her paw or leg and injure her, not only because that would make me incredibly sad, but also because I need her to be in good health to do the job I need her to do. I also wouldn't want to have someone trip and hurt themselves because I placed her in an unsafe position. I always try to remember, just because I have the right to be there doesn't mean I have the right to be in everyone's way. Okay, let's move on to the creepy people that we meet along our travels. You guys know what I'm talking about. That drunk guy that slurs at you about how he was bit in the face by a dog that looks just like yours. Or that human scholar who says you should leave your dog at home. How about that lady that just goes off on you with profanity when you ask her four obnoxious children to stop taunting your dog, or that twitchy teen in the trench coat who's staring intently at your dog and mumbling to himself. Rule number one, keep a healthy distance from these people. Logic never beats insanity. And no matter how much you try to explain the rights of you and your dog, these folks simply aren't hearing you. I'd rather miss my bus than get on one with a raving lunatic. Wouldn't you? Here's a trick. Act like you can't hear. Maybe put some earbuds in so it looks like you're listening to music or look down at the ground as you walk. But don't engage. It's rare to be accosted when you don't give the crazy person your attention. Rule number two. If you find yourself in a situation where you're getting uncomfortable, ask a sane looking stranger to help you out. Most people don't want to get involved. But if you ask directly, quite a few people will help you stand up for your safety. There is a safety in numbers, so don't let someone follow you into a dark alley. Enter a busy restaurant and ask someone to call the police if need be. Rule number three, don't be confrontational unless you're prepared to back it up. I'm tall at six foot and by no means a lightweight, but the last thing I want to do is have a throwdown with some maniac. All of Mavis's training and my hard work could be destroyed in an epic five minute battle. It's just so not worth it. I'll spend just a few minutes discussing escalator safety. In my opinion, the only safe way to travel on an escalator with your service dog is if you can carry her on and off. The risk of getting a toenail stuck is too high. Best case scenario, your dog rips off her toenail and is out of commission for a few days. Worst case scenario, she breaks a bone in her foot and is out of commission for a few weeks or longer. Avoiding escalators is all good and well, but I have been in situations where there are no stairs and the elevator is non-functional. So training escalator safety is important to cover. I start with basic stair work. Your dog should be able to go up and down stairs in a very calm manner at a walk. They shouldn't hop up the first few stairs going up and they shouldn't leap off the last few stairs going down. Your dog should be calm when going up and down the stairs. They should not be pulling you off balance. It's well worth the time to teach your dog a solid wait command. So if you are slow, they patiently wait at your side as you make your way up and down the staircase. They shouldn't be cutting in front of you as you go up and they shouldn't be dragging you on the way back down. The last thing you want is to trip over your dog and fall on him. When your dog knows the command wait and will freeze for a few moments, then you're ready to give escalators a try. The biggest problem with escalators is that they are on 100% of the whole time. There is no taking it slowly and letting Fluffy give it a try first. She's either getting on or she's choking the tar out of herself. Same goes for the conclusion of the ride. She either dismounts or she gets her toes chewed off. Having a dog that knows commands like up, wait, and jump can go a long way in helping your dog figure out what she's supposed to do when getting on and off an escalator. Mavis doesn't like escalators, but she will ride them if I ask her to. Using up to get her onto the first part, wait, to have her stay in one position as we ride it and jump as we approach the end of it help me to keep the journey safe. Because I know she's going to jump at the end to avoid catching a toenail in the track, I always wait a few stairs after the last occupant boards the escalator before having Mavis load up onto it. This allows the guy in front of me to get out of her way at the end so she can hop to safety without plowing into anyone. If you are unable to use stairs, Make sure your dog can behave safely in an elevator. Ideally, this means you should enter the elevator and stand against a wall where you have your dog do a wall block. This way you can keep him safe from others entering and exiting the elevator. Make sure he has a solid stand stay so he's not tempted to dart out the elevator leaving you stuck behind a crowd. Last but not least, I'd like to discuss safety around other dogs. 
This one is really difficult because not only are there loose dogs everywhere, but we also encounter those people who say things like, oh, Snookums loves other dogs and just wants to play. As their manic mutt is straining at her leash, flinging foamy slobber at our peaceful service dog. Here's a statistic I just made up. 85% of people can't read 85% of dog behavior. That's to say that most people that you encounter with a dog are not within reaching distance of reality when it comes to what their dog is thinking. A wagging tail isn't always a friendly gesture and standing still doesn't mean the dog is non-confrontational. I already did my required training with Mavis and new dogs. She has met, ignored, and worked alongside enough dogs in her training for me to feel pretty confident that she's going to be reliable in public. She's been jumped three times in the last year by strange dogs, thankfully with no serious injuries. Because of this, her level of reaction to an overwhelming dog has increased. And I can't really blame her. She's unsure if she's going to be under attack or not. Even a friendly, obnoxious dog can be highly distracting. People just don't get it. I don't need for her to say hello to little butterfly in the Whole Foods parking lot or romp with snaggletooth Brutus at the gym. Her job is to stay on task and to be able to focus on me. If I can, I avoid all dogs in public because I just don't need the hassle. When I can't get away from someone with a dog, I place Mavis in a blocking position behind me and step in front of her so that the dog can't get close to her face. I've been known to pull the dog back by his collar or scruff more than a few times, and I've even held shut the muzzle of a dog that was beginning to act aggressively until his owner could get a hold of him. I have no problem using my foot or knee to shove a strange dog out of our personal space, and if I ever needed to use more force in the future to protect Mavis, I wouldn't think twice about it. Don't get me wrong. I love dogs, but I just so happen to love my dog more than their dog. Hopefully my musings about safety while moving about the world alongside your service dog has given you some food for thought. Next time you find yourself in a questionable situation, I hope my little video gives you some ideas on how to escape untouched and empowered. Thanks for watching, and I'd love it if you could take a moment to subscribe. Leave a comment and let me know if you've encountered any dangerous situations with your service dog and how you managed to get out of them. Bye! Gross. All of Mavis's training. No. Oh, God, you stink. You and Daisy both. Oof. Good girl.